Hello, and welcome to Maniunk Mornings. I'm Leo Dillinger, and this is our brand new web series brought to you by Maniunk.com and Terry Leahy Films, Maniunk's premier video production company. Let's take a look at the latest happenings around Main Street. Philly Beer Week kicks off today and runs through Sunday, June 12th. Our local businesses Lucky's Last Chance and Maniunk Brewing Company are participating this year, so be sure to stop by for some ice cold beers and a variety of events throughout the week. Voted Maniunk's best gift boutique, The Little Apple has officially changed locations just a few doors down from the original storefront. Be sure to stop in and buy something special. Mark your calendars for Saturday, June 25th and Sunday, June 26th as the Maniunk Arts Festival takes to Main Street. This is Philadelphia's largest juried outdoor arts festival with 300 plus artists and thousands of attendees. If you love art, be sure to come down to Main Street on June 25th and 26th. Head owner of Maya J and head chef Craig Wilson has officially started his second business endeavor on Main Street. He's opening a brand new Italian bistro in BYOB called Gigi, so be sure to like their page on Facebook and keep updated. And finally, the biggest event of the week, the Philadelphia International Cycling Classic, is taking place this Sunday, June 5th. The men's race begins at 8 a.m. and the women's race begins at 12.30 p.m. atop the famed Maniunk Wall located on Lyceum Avenue. Be sure to stop by Main Street and cheer on all of your favorite cyclists. And now let's go to Colleen for our special interview of the week. Colleen. I'm here with Julie Sabella, owner of The Wall Cycling and Bar Fitness Studio, Maniunk Magazine's upcoming cover story. Why don't you start off by telling us a little, the people at home a little bit about The Wall? Sure, uh, we're indoor cycling and bar fitness, so spinning and bar. Um, and we offer about 55 classes a week, starting as early as 5, 10 a.m. Uh, weekends, we you know go seven days a week all levels so we don't have specific classes for beginners because you're in full control and it's your workout. For the full story check out the summer issue of Maniunk Magazine which will be hitting Main Street in the next couple of weeks. Now we've got a couple of fun questions for you. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? Uh, I wake up really early. What time? My first alarm goes off at 3.11 a.m. Oh my! Yes. <laughs> so I do always hit snooze once. And then I wake up, I head downstairs, and then I find myself just sitting on the couch kind of staring blankly at the TV. I think I need about 10 minutes to wake up after I've snoozed. Um, but I have to have my body moving. Um, some people are like, why don't you get a little more sleep? I just can't. I just need to get downstairs, wake up, and then start the day. Totally awesome. Uh, and what are your three morning essential must-haves? Uh, I would say an Americano, um, two Clementines for breakfast, and the goal of not of de-alarming our alarm in our house. I always seem to walk out of the house really early in the morning, and I forget the alarm has been set, and my husband gets a really early wake-up siren <laughs> when I walk out the door. I'm sure he appreciates that being At on least your once list a week. of things to try to remember to <laughs> <Yeah>. do. <laughs> All right, uh, if you were a Saturday morning cartoon, which would you be and why? Um, I think I'd be the Tasmanian Devil because he's just mass chaos and always moving at 100 miles per hour. But he has really good intentions, it seems, and always gets uh, the job done. That's awesome. All right, and then for our last couple of questions, I've got a little trivia for you. Nothing to be afraid of. Um, so first one, what structure is a series of fortifications made of stone, brick, tamp earth, wood, and other materials generally built along the east to west line across the historical northern borders of China? A bridge. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's the Great Wall of China. Oh, the Great Wall of China. <laughs> Great. Good answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what is the 11th studio album by the English rock band Pink Floyd that was one of the best-selling albums of the 1980s and sold over 11.5 million albums, making it the third highest certified album in the United States? I think I caught on to this. <laughs> I'm going to guess The Wall. Good guess. You're correct. It is The Wall. And last one. What is the name of the steep road in northwest Philadelphia that's used in the Philadelphia International Cycling, Cycling Competition? Uh, I'm going to say it's also where our first studio was located, right at the wall. Whoa! <laughs> well done, Julie. Thank you. It was really great having you on the couch this week. We uh, learned a lot about you and a little bit more about your business. Speaking of the wall, now to this week's feature, The Wall. I'm finished. That was it. Hey everyone, we're at the intersection of Levering and Tower Street, the middle of the infamous Maniunk Wall. This Sunday, thousands of attendees will be taking to the street and cheering on cycling teams. 
as they take part in the most difficult leg of the Philly International Cycling Classic. Now, if you think this incline behind me is bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. It may only be a half mile from the bottom of levering to the top of the wall, but once you reach Tower Street, this is no easy task. The Maniunk Wall gets its name from the founders of the bike race, who were mapping out the course in 1985, and since then, cyclists from around the world who've competed in the race shudder at the name. The wall's incline reaches a 17% hill grade at Tower Street, where the street changes names from Levering to Lyceum. What's even worse than going up the wall once? Try doing it six times if you're a female racer, and if you're a male racer, try going up nine times. What's even more interesting, cyclists claim that the climb is not the hardest part of the race. It's after the climb, when cycling teams begin their attack to seize the front of the pack. Despite the difficulty surrounding the wall, racers thrive off the adrenaline they get when attendees are cheering them on. Even though the race goes through other neighborhoods like Roxborough, East Falls, and Fairmount Park, there's nothing quite like watching the bike race in Maniunk. If you're looking for the perfect place to watch the bike race, either check out the Maniunk Wall or stop by any of our amazing bars and restaurants on Main Street. So that's our segment on the Maniunk Wall. Be sure to stop down to Maniunk all day Sunday for both the men's and the women's bike race. Also, we're raffling off a brand new Fuji bike, so be sure to check out maniunk.com for more details on that. Thank you for stopping by. Well, thanks for joining us this week. I'm Leo, this is Julie, this is Colleen. A special thanks to Smoke and John's Barbecue, Maniunk.com, and Terry Leahy Films. Thanks and have a great morning. <laughs>